The NBA preseason is in full effect now. We had a pretty good slate of games on Monday. Uh, now it's, it is still the preseason, so the, a lot of the star players only play 20 minutes, even less in some instances. Uh, the games don't really matter. Teams are kind of just trying to get back in the swing of things. But Monday had a unique set of circumstances because there were a lot of superstar level players coming back from injury for the first time. Uh, it's been a long time since we've seen any of these guys, so I, I just kind of wanted to take a moment and take a look at what they did in this first game back. Now, first up is a very polarizing player, Ben Simmons, the, the Brooklyn Nets. He had his first game action in 470 days. It's been 470 days since he passed up that dunk in Atlanta and everything fell apart. Um, obviously the potential is always going to be there and in this first game back he showed a lot of what has made him such a desirable star even as he has sat out and as he's as he's gone through all of these things that he's gone through uh, I did listen to his interview with JJ Redick I thought it was really interesting I enjoyed hearing what he had to say a lot I think he might have been able to like subdue some of the hate that he got if he had been just more talkative through the right channels but that's a discussion for another time. I'm focused strictly on the basketball here. And on court, he looked good. He played 19 minutes, only took six shots, scored six points. But the thing that looked the best is he was moving like the old Ben Simmons used to. He was an absolute menace on defense. Pulled down four rebounds, five assists, only a steal. But he was distributing the ball well. His vision for his height were on full display. He was hitting guys with cross-court passes that looked like absolutely effortless. And most importantly, the starting lineup with Joe Harris, Nick Claxton, Kyrie and KD and Ben Simmons looked great together. Simmons fit right in with what the Nets have been wanting to run with Kyrie and KD. Kyrie hit him on an open run to the rim. Ben Simmons was facilitating the ball around and the Nets offense just flowed a lot better. Then they brought him in uh, pretty quick once they benched the starters and took them out, they brought him back in for a run with the second team where he was even more the de facto point guard, and the offense moved just as well. He was still in complete command of that, that team in that offense, and that was something that, you know, even if he didn't shoot or fill the, the box score, you knew he was going to be able to put his fingerprints on a game because he would lock down whoever the other team's best player was, and he would initiate all of the offense with elite level playmaking and vision. So it looks like after 20 minutes of a preseason game, does look like that team is going to be a force to be reckoned with if they can stay healthy and continue to display all of these things that we saw. Next up, we go to LA where there were uh, quite a few players coming back for the first time in a long time. Damian Lillard and the Portland Trailblazers took on Kawhi Leonard, Paul George, and the LA Clippers. This was Dame's first game in 276 days, Kawhi's first game in 476 games. So, very extended layoffs for both of these guys, especially Kawhi. It has been over a year since we saw him. Uh, I will start with Dame first. I thought he looked very good compared to last year. Last year, the, this core injury, whatever it was, took a lot of his athleticism away and he just looked like he was laboring out there like it looked like it hurt him to shoot and that's not good with Damian Lillard who is someone who is one of the best pure shooters in the game uh, and it looks like that is fully gone fully healthy his shooting was a little bit off but I mean I think that's to be expected after so many so many days off uh, he did only finish 5 of 13 2 assists 3 rebounds uh, but Again, he looked more like Dame. He had the athleticism. He had the burst. He was putting those shots up without any hesitation. He had the same level of court vision. I think, you know, the rust might come off a little bit by bit, especially as he's kind of coming back to a brand new team than what he left it with all of their offseason additions, and he still hasn't played with any of the guys they acquired in the C.J. McCollum trade. So I think there's chemistry to be built there, but it's super encouraging. And on the Clippers' side, this team is 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 kind of nice. I hate to say it as a Laker fan, but this Clipper team, Kawhi looked great, wasted no time hitting a three right in his defender's face the first play of the game, uh, ended up finishing just 11 points, 16 minutes, three of eight from the field, but he was everywhere on the court. He was running He was running the rim, attacking the basket, he was playmaking, he was grabbing rebounds, initiating fast breaks, 
he looked exactly like we left him, and that makes a lot of sense because he is a, a basketball robot. Uh, Paul George as well had his lingering injuries last season, came back, looked just like he did before, uh, maybe not quite at that MV, MVP level yet, but again, first game of the preseason, this was just, this team looked unbelievable. John Wall making his return for the first time in, in months uh, after his situation in Houston, whatever you want to call it. And he came in and provided a nice little spark, only 14 minutes, but he's going to bring a lot of different looks to this team. They still started Reggie Jackson at point guard, and, you know, that's probably the move. But having John Wall come in with his elite level of playmaking and his ability to score a little bit more consistently than Reggie Jackson because he's just so adept at getting to the rim and, like, finishing through contact... I think this is going to, you know, the Clippers are going to be a team that you cannot rest on. I was looking at the box score. They didn't even play Terrence Mann. Terrence Mann was like one of the most important players for them the last couple of playoff runs, and he didn't even play. I don't know if he's injured. I didn't look into it super, super closely, but I couldn't believe that they had this performance and this many contributions from their roster with him not playing at all. So... I think this is a really encouraging sign for the Clippers, and you know that that should be a, a concerning thing for a lot of other teams out west. And then the last player I want to talk about is the one who it has been the longest since we have seen, Jamal Murray on the Denver Nuggets. Five hundred and thirty-nine days since he tore his ACL, and you know what? He looked pretty nice. I know that there was some controversy with him last season as the the team had announced that he was cleared but he ne- he still didn't play because it it was reported that he didn't feel 100% confident or comfortable and even as as late as this off season he was saying things like you know I still don't have 100% confidence I don't feel like myself yet quite and like those were concerning things but I don't know if he was just you know underselling or what was going on but he looked exactly like Jamal Murray and that's a player I've not really been a big fan of in the past I've you know I mean what do I know but I thought his shot selection looked a little spotty at times I thought he was too too prone to playing hero ball when he was on the court with Nikola Jokic I thought it made more sense to run everything through Jokic but tonight Jamal looked really good 15 minutes in his first game back efficient 4-7 2-3 from 3 and he was making all of the right moves. He had a, a great three kind of step to the side. He had a really good run to the rim and finish. And if that's what they're getting, I mean, Michael Porter Jr. as well was another really efficient performance. 5-7 of seven from the field in 14 minutes, 12 points. And this is what Jokic needs. If jo- Jokic didn't take a shot until like halfway through the second quarter. And this was like, the offense was still just poetry in motion. Just watching him set the floor, make the right passes, read it and see where everyone is going to be. And I think if this team can stay healthy, that Jokic is, is probably not going to be a, an MVP top candidate again after winning it two consecutive years. But I really think this could take his playmaking to another level, finally having these guys back. It's not going to always be this efficient, but still, I think this is one of those one of those teams that could really be a contender coming out of the West. All things considered, the health, barring health and everything, of course. But I really think this is going to be a team that you don't want to sleep on. Um, and I think that's everything as far as, as the games today. Paulo Bancaro had an unbelievable dunk uh, in the Magic's game. That was incredible if you've not seen that yet. Uh, but other than that, I think that's everything. The preseason's going to roll on. Um, I might come back and try to do another video or two, maybe about the preseason, maybe something else. I can't really decide. Uh, if there's anything from the preseason so far that has caught your eye, uh, please let me know in the comments. Otherwise, really appreciate you watching. I hope everyone's doing well. Uh, take care and enjoy the day.